Welcome my peoples, my peoples, today we will be unlocking a very effective method in meticulously crafting a 4-2-3-1 tactic. Now, this tactic has been developed with the utmost care, prioritising player roles and player instructions whilst minimising the team instructions in possession for better control. In this video, I'll be breaking down every aspect of crafting and implementing this game-changing 4-2-3-1. With defensive solidity and attacking flair, we'll be exploring each player's role and instruction, understanding why this tactic is so dominant. Whether you're managing a top club or leading an underdog, this method may just give you an edge. So, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Let's get stuck in. So what's the story behind this method? Why exactly have I chosen to create my tactic in this way? I often use team instructions to create tactics and specify what I want to do. For instance, if I want my fullbacks to overlap or underlap, I would use the team instructions to achieve it. Similarly, if I want to focus on attacking from down the flanks, I would use attack down the flanks team instruction. However, I wonder if such instructions are necessary. Can we have better control over our tactics by using specific player roles and player instructions? In my opinion, it's possible to have more control over your tactics in certain areas by letting the roles and the player instructions take charge. Using team instructions not only affects multiple players, which might not be what you want, but it can also have unwanted effects on players' mentalities. For instance, using the overlap instruction can decrease the mentality of your wingers and or increase the mentality of your fullbacks. However, the overlap and underlap instruction doesn't only apply to wide players but can also apply to central players who have moved wide momentarily. Nevertheless, there are ways to have your fullback overlap or ask your wingers to hold up the ball waiting for your fullback to advance without facing these unwanted effects. Of course, team instructions will have their use but it doesn't mean you have to use them or use all of them and today we're going to be looking at in possession in the next video we may be looking at hybrid pressing which again will include you using player instructions it will be very important but today we are going to be breaking down this 43 one by the way is absolutely mental you're going to see in the results winning with chelsea and winning with stoke i even played a second season because i had to we was in europe but now let's break down that tactic before looking at the results and we will be playing a european final at the end so welcome to the tactic screen we are going to break down and create at the same time it will help me get my opinion and ideas across but also i'm going to put this at this point because i'm, I'm aware that most of you or some of you will just skip to the tactic download part this tactic will come with set pieces. So in the download folder, you're gonna get three different tactics for three different scenarios. There's only really one main tactic, but you've got other two to help you in different scenarios and also set pieces. Now, I'm not gonna say that we score the most goals or a ridiculous amount of goals from set pieces, but it actually does help you defensively as well. So it's not just about attacking and getting those goals, but it's also about helping you defensively from those throw-ins and those and from those corners, sorry. Now, it was a YouTube comment actually on why I decided to use a 4-2-3-1 because they wanted a tactic for Chelsea. Now, I was looking at the Chelsea squad thinking, what is actually the best formation for this side? So at the start, I knew that my Chelsea team will look something like this. And then I had to work a way of getting the best out of not every single player, of course, but out of certain individuals. I wanted my fullbacks to get further forward. I wanted, of course, my wingers to come inside and be involved in play. I wanted my strike as well to be not that advanced forward because we all 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 use advanced forward of course it's the go-to role but i wanted to use a different role a complete forward that typical number nine hold up the ball get in behind does everything drop as well so i wanted to involve a complete forward and now i'm going to put the player roles that i did choose so super keeper on attack for the goalkeeper to help us build out from the back also helping us build out from the back are two ball playing defenders now the full backs like i said earlier i wanted them to get further forward we could use a wing back a complete wing back as well but actually i just feel that the full back on attack 
provided better balance going forward and defensively. Double pivot. Now, I did try and use different variations. Some of them I was fairly pleased with, but none gave me the control over the tactic, like using two defensive midfielders on support. Now, on the left-hand side, the inverted winger or Sterling's going to be a inverted winger on attack. He's going to be very direct, collecting the ball, running at defenders. The attacking midfielder is going to be a shadow striker, there's going to be reasons for that and then we have a complete forward um, up top as well so the complete forward will be looking to drop deep as well as move into the channels creating space for palmer or the shadow striker to then make runs in behind and exploit any space on the right hand side we do have an inside forward but now on support now this is where i'm carefully crafting the tactic because i have chosen a complete forward a shadow striker if you have noticed they do come with some hard-coded instructions but not just a little bit they also they, they come with a lot of instructions so the shadow striker will be dribbling more taking more risk getting further forward and moving into the channels now you can compare that with the attacking midfielder who just gets further forward you sort of got a blank canvas but using a role like this means that also you can start adding other team instructions that won't necessarily have a great effect on that player and how he behaves now let's say i wanted my team to dribble less especially in that attacking area i can't necessarily get that with the shadow striker because he's hard coded to dribble more so regardless if i use dribble less in the team instruction my shadow striker will still be looking to dribble more than often and that's one way you can lose control over your tactic in attack if i want to dribble less but using roles that are dribbling more i'm not necessarily going to get that dribble less effect so my idea is to allow these player roles to sort of determine the attack so the shadow striker will be dribbling more taking more risk getting further forward moving into the channels and the complete forward will be holding up more dribbling more and taking more risk moving to the channels and roaming from position just like that as well what we can be getting is that work the ball into the box effect because your shadow striker will be holding up the ball slowing down play allowing runners to get into the box but also in those wider areas we aren't crossing we are using roles that aren't necessarily crossing their inside forward will be crossing less often so already we are sort of minimizing that crossing element especially from these four attackers here i still want crossing it doesn't necessarily mean i want crosses from deep but i want crosses that could be from the byline and that could be cutbacks if cutbacks uh, count as crossing and this is where the fullbacks on attack come into play because now they are hard coded to cross more often so the role that behavior is going to be activated the fullbacks will want to get down the byline or get further forward like it says here get further forward and then cross more often but of course work the ball into the box is not just about stopping crosses but also trying to stop your team from wasting chances with long shooting and other things as well so as these are the player roles that i have chosen for the tactic we can now look at all the player instructions that i have carefully selected So in goal, we are using a super keeper on attack. I have asked him to pass it shorter. Earlier, I did say I want to, um, I want my goalkeeper to help us build out from the back. Now in play, if our defenders pass it back to the goalkeeper, when our goalkeeper is now looking to distribute the ball, I want him to look to pass it shorter. That's the passing directness. Rather than being more direct and covering more ground with the passing, I want him just to be fairly safe with his passing as he is already taking more risks. So I'm sort of managing his um, risk taking with his passing. The two centre defenders, now they both have marked tighter, which doesn't necessarily have an effect if you're not asking them to mark anyone. So at the moment, it's just there, but I was using it sparingly in games, trying to mark. So if the opposition had a big striker, I would select one of my centre backs, whoever was the bigger one, to sort of mark the striker. And you could do that by asking to mark specific player or just mark the position as well, like a striker in the centre, for an example. Now, the full backs do come with the most instructions, but it's carefully selected did so the ball playing defenders will be taking more risk that's two out of our back four taking more risk but i wanted us to still take more risk building up from the back but not with everyone so i chose is i chose sorry not to give the right back take more risk but the left back will be taking more risk crossing from the byline dribbling more 
cutting inside with the ball and tackling harder. Cutting inside with the ball is because I wanted my fullbacks in possession to make sort of underlapping runs. Rather than running wide with the ball, if he's running towards the goal, I have found that the fullback finds it easier to get towards the byline and then cut it back. But if he's running away from goal, he's going to find it more difficult to cut back inside the box. And to help with that underlapping run, the wingers will be holding up the ball. So now I don't have to ask for that overlap. I can just simply ask my winger to hold up the ball and then ask my fullbacks to get further forward as well. Now, just to very quickly touch on why not using the overlap or underlap instruction. For example, if I use overlap on the right, my right winger, his mentality has now dropped to positive. That is not exactly something that I want to happen. If I remove this now and go back to my right winger, his mentality has boosted up back to attacking, which is where I want it to be. So the right back is the same as the left back, but without take more risk. And now we've got one player in our back line not being as risky in possession moving forward into defensive midfield like i said earlier i have tried different variations i wanted i didn't want the two to do the exact same thing so for casado he's got no instruction just hey you casado be casado be careful of player traits though because player traits is also very important in how a player will behave and then for enzo fernandez he's going to be dribbling more and taking more risks now I do not have to pass into space, which effectively is asking your players to play more through balls and encouraging more forward runs. But we don't need to encourage more forward runs. I mean, the fullbacks are on attack. The wingers are getting further forward. So was my shadow striker. So we've already got those runners. We don't need more encouragement. Now, playing those balls into those paths or trying those risky passes, that is where take more risk comes into action as well which take more risk is there with enzo but the shadow striker again hard coded take more risk the inside forward hard coded take more risk the center forward hard coded take more risk so there's no real need for me to add this instruction actually i'm just adding more risk which could just mean that we're losing the ball unnecessarily so unnecessarily why does that sound wrong? Dribbling more because we don't have any central players head dribbling with the ball. So Enzo will be that one dribbling more, but he's going to be taking more risks. Now the two defensive midfielders, now you can see here, one is more riskier than the other. So, and I know there's a lot of information. So these six players here, the risk is well balanced. We've got the left back, the two centre backs and Enzo taking more risks, whereas Casado and James on we've also got players dribbling forward while some others aren't now if i use run at the fence and pass into space this will then affect everyone i've lost that control now it's not hey you do it and you don't it's going to be a bit of hey everyone try and do it sort of thing so i guess that's what i mean about having better control in your tactic lastly for the player roles moving into the attacking four we've got the inverted winger holding up the ball tackling harder he's going to be holding up the ball allowing for those overlaps or those underlaps and tackling harder as well because i've also managed the aggressiveness in our tackles so i've created this sort of box shape so the left back the left winger, the attacking midfielder, the right winger and the right back will all be tackling harder. That's our sort of box. Now, these guys here are the protectors of the goal. I don't want them going flying in, losing their tackles and leaving spaces. And the, uh, the striker up top as well, he's actually going to be easy enough tackle. So what I want from him is to... It's just shadow, just shadow. Don't be aggressive, don't go and engage and press hard. I want you just to shadow, force those balls into wider areas where then our wingers can then tackle harder or he can shadow allow the pass into defensive midfielder where the shadow striker then goes tackle hard balancing the press sort of but we will do a different video on hybrid pressing so that means the inside forward will be holding up the ball tackling harder as well lastly up top our complete forward is easing off tackles so that's how i created the tactic at first i went with the player roles i didn't do the player instructions of course i wanted to see 
what I would be using with the team instructions. So I was kind of working hand in hand, going back and forth, team instructions and player instructions, but I did start off with the player roles. So here we are with the team instructions. The team mentality is on balance because again, I want to control. <laughs> Obviously control will be adding more risk. Attacking will be adding even more risk. But at first I just wanted to study my players. So I used balance just to see the behavior and well, it stayed like that. The attacking width is set to uh, narrow. This is something that you can't really control with player roles and instructions. Now, I do believe actually, so asking your wingers or your wide players to sit more narrow, asking them to cut inside of the ball does have an effect on your attacking width because of course they will be more narrow, but you can't ask your central players to be in close proximity with each other, if that makes sense. So that's the reason why I went with narrow. I'm trying to close the spaces in between our players and I couldn't really do that with our central players with the passing directness we have gone with shorter and with the tempo we have gone with slightly higher now the passing directness is something that you can control with player uh with the player instructions but i wanted everyone to pass it shorter anyway so it made better sense for me to use the team instructions rather than going to each individual player instructions and asking them to pass it shorter. Maybe sometimes you don't want too much player instructions. And then tempo, again, something that you can't really affect with player roles and instructions. Now you can use more attacking duties, more playmakers to try and get your tempo a bit higher and players playing one twos, but hey, which is used slightly higher tempo. And then the final third, low crossing as well. Again, something that you can't really influence using player roles and instructions. In transition, we are going to counter press to try and win the ball back and also counter attack. Again, you can't really use that in the team instructions, but when it comes to hybrid, but when it comes to hybrid pressing, we might not be using this instruction. So watch out for that video as well. Goalkeeper in possession, taking short kicks and distributing it to the center backs. Lastly, out of possession, we are using a high press, a higher defensive line. The trigger press is more, uh, more often. Now, of course you can use much more often, but for one, I did find I got better results using more often. And that is also because of what I'm asking the striker to do. Even though we're high pressing, so I want him to slightly engage up top, but I don't want him to be aggressive and start running around like a madman i wanted our press to have some control i guess and then the defensive line we are using drop off more now i'm not sure if this is a stoke and chelsea thing because at the start i was using tiago silva and then at stoke as well you don't have defenders with great pace and agility so i was just asking my defense line to drop off more it suited those teams that i was managing maybe it might Maybe your centre backs are fast, you might not need to use this or whatever it is, but that's the case at Chelsea and Stoke. As usual, there are different variations. So we do have a halfback, and I was using this version, a halfback version, when we got a 2 0 advantage or if the momentum was swinging to the other side so if we was winning one nil for an example at half time and i noticed that the other team's momentum is increasing then i'll switch to a halfback try and get the ball and gain control a little bit more getting that halfback to play in a back three so we could just basically slow the tempo down a little bit and have a little bit more control again without having to use the team instructions of slowing down the pace we could just use a player role or two and lastly when you are away against the big size now there is a natural focus down the flanks that is what i wanted to do which is why we've got one two three four players getting further forward on our flank so we don't have control on our flanks because i just want mayhem down our flanks with players getting further forward and causing absolute chaos but we're slightly emphasizing that in away from home. So we're trying to get the ball away from the middle and get the ball out to the flanks away from home against the big sides. And that is the only difference. So that's the tactic wrapped up. Now we can have a quick look at the results that we got at Chelsea and the mad results that we got at Stoke. So I keep saying that we got mad results at Stoke. The results at Chelsea were kind of mad as well. So we won the Carabao Cup, but we also won the Premier League. So we've got the double in our first season, losing only one game, which is a very close 3-2 defeat away to Man City. We did get knocked out in the third round by Tottenham Hotspur, and I'm sure the Chelsea fans won't be happy with that. Looking at the average rating, James in Chilwell, the key players, fullbacks with Milo Gusto as well in the top 
five. Now, we don't have a main goal scorer, but what we do have are a lot of goal scorers. Here, we do have four players in double digits. So, Jackson, Noni, Sterling, and Cole Palmer. And then looking at the assists, we've got Enzo, James, and Chilwell in double figures for assists. But we just have everybody chipping in with the goals. With Stolt, this is my favorite test save ever and i mean i'm even demonstrating that by playing a second season at stoke which i never do a tactic test and we will be playing a conference league final with stoke and that's because we won the carabao cup yes we won the carabao cup in our first season with stock i also actually want to show you the game status as well just to show you that it's not a save and reload test save we don't do that over here we were playing the games the carabao cup admittedly though i did use instant result i don't really play cup competitions i only like playing the league games but in the cup you can see the run here to the final we beat Knox county grimsby everton at home then portsmouth at home this is the best result of the whole test beating newcastle okay okay they had a man sent off okay okay so we beat Luton in the semi-final and then in the final we beat Bournemouth but in the league I mean I don't know what's more impressive winning 41 games in the league 93 win rate or winning the Carabao Cup whatever it is you choose but let's look at the player ratings again because the right back Kana Kai Jana whoever the right back the left back the two key players so we know who the key players are in the system and then we've got the inverted winger here as well Luke Kondo and Andre Vidigal which is actually a very exciting player the media prediction by the way with Stoke is around mid table so here we can see ninth and in the season preview I can't remember what it is it will be a different yeah it's going to be different now that the season's done and dusted we've played 46 games but at the start I believe that Stoke are a mid table side so again to be dominating statistically is very good that was the Stoke first season now we are going to play that european final and also how did we do in the premier league because it was a bit of a rebuild we did bring in 11 players we sold a lot and if you look here as well in the squad there are quite a few loans so one two i mean the key players here are quite literally long players so i had to replace them i had to replace the players out under contract and now finished i'm struggling with my speech here so we did do a mini rebuild at stoke for the premier league season and the european season so let's play that european game and also look at the squad that is now in the premier league so you might get some signing tips here we've got bruno amione from santos laguna he's going to be well he was our main center back he's the one that we're going to be looking up to i mean his leadership is nine i didn't actually notice that until now raul gustavo he now he was supposed to be the backup center back and he was fairly effective from corners ben wilmot wasn't as clinical from corners but ben wilmot was the main partner for bruno we did sign martinelli as a defensive midfielder i had a short list but his name is martinelli and i'm a gooner so I mean, that's that's one reason why. Kanya Fajumoto. Now, this guy is going to be our shadow striker because we lost Lee Kondal, who was on loan from Wolves. So we bought him and he likes to try killer balls, plays one, twos and all of that goodness. Mohamed Bellumi. Now, I'm definitely butchered that name. Now, I have played in the Portuguese league before and I have seen this guy thinking, oh, he's intriguing. So I had the opportunity to sign him and I have signed him and he was fairly decent, scoring 15 goals and nine assists. Then we had to buy a striker. I got my sort of Harlan type. I, I've never come across this striker and I'm very excited about this guy. And you guys should be excited about him as well. Maybe signing me. Six foot four. He's got decent jump and reach, long throws, but he's got good dribbling and finishing, scoring 17 goals in 37 starts. Luis Diaz, not the Liverpool one, but we we found one from Colombia who plays for Envidigo. And yeah. He was our left winger, but the backup left winger to Henri Mosquera. I know his name is Henry, but I'm again, I'm a gooner. So Henri Mosquera was the main left winger. Then we have Archie Brown as the left back. Jaden Bogle as the right back. Pair of English lads. Louise Jr., which was very funny because I went into our third game of the Premier League and realised we had no goalkeeper. So I bought Louis Jr. And then because we sold Tyrese Campbell to Al Halil, who came with a crazy bid, but also Ryan and me, two players that were very key in the first season, they got bought for big money. So we did buy Vivaldo Semedo in December for £10 million. He scored one goal, but only started six games. And again, he looks very, very promising. I know you're dying to see how we did in the Premier League 
League. In the Premier League, we finished fourth. So now we're in the Champions League. We lost 10 games. A lot of games actually to be losing. But away from home in the Premier League, it was, it was going to be a tough Oh, so we have finished above Arsenal and Manchester United though and we have scored 70 goals which is just two behind the top leaders in the league I think we've done very very well we had the most shots for in the Premier League so we was attacking fewer shots again we dropped slightly but if you are looking at the quality of us compared to to the others i mean there is a big gap and now goals from corners yeah we just got a, a decent amount in the premier league compared to others again i didn't quite catch the season preview at the start of the season but our media prediction was 19th that's our media prediction when we just got promoted i don't think they're really taking into account of the players that we did buy but the media prediction we would have been fairly low nowhere near fourth place but now we've got a european final against sassuolo let's play that before ending the video always oh, a big game so you know it means i've got my headphones on now for this game we are missing our goalkeeper who got a light injury lewis junior and our attacking midfielder as well got a light injury before this game so we are missing two key players and we have replaced them with Andre Vidigal who I had to retrain actually as an attacking midfielder and Bonham Jack Bonham who clearly isn't the greatest I mean look at his value and he's playing in the final of a European game here okay good luck Jack good luck Jack and good luck Stoke let's go Team talks are fairly important, actually. So we are going to uh, let's pump our fist. Let's try and get some motivation. Motivation. Let's go, boys. And here we are. The boys are coming out. I just forgot that I turned the music off. So unfortunately, there's no Europa Conference League anthem. That is so, so disappointing. But the boys are ready. We're ready. I hope the solo aren't ready. Look, here we are. Music off. Let's put the music back on just in case. And let's kick off the game. Here's Tarati, the goalkeeper, plays it into Lopez. Our press is it's fairly, fairly controlled. Flamingo, they got a player called Flamingo. Lovely. Here's Flamingo, plays it into, they're definitely using an inverted fullback. Oh, there we are. Balumi, Balumi, Halumi cheese. Here's Martinelli now. Here comes Stolt. Here's Jaden Bogle. Here's Vinigo. It's the first minute. Oh my God, it's 55 seconds. And Andre Vinigo, who we had to retrain as the attacking midfielder, has scored an early goal. Where is the match sound? I don't hear no match sound in my headphones. Ah, oh, it was muted in my in my settings. Of course, of course I didn't hear it. But it is a solo nil, Stoke one. What a start. Like I said, I mean, the press was controlled. And then Witches went on a mad counter-attack. Oh, we've got a corner. Halloumi, Balumi, Cheese. Headed out by Henrique. Here's Balumi. Here's Mosquera. Ben Wilmot. Amione. Balumi. With the ball in the edge of the ball. Oh my God, what a hit. Flipping hell, son. He's rattled the bar. Here's Durasimini. I'm butchering so many names. because These names are not even familiar with me. And he's hit the ball over the bar. Vidigal, Ben Wilmot, Berger, Ha, oh, Muscleta, here's Henri, Henri on the left hand side, is he going to cut in? No, he holds up the ball, it's Vidigal, it's Vidigal, <laughs> let's go, and Vidigal gets a brace, that's his 10th goal of the season, brilliant work by Henri Mascara on the left hand side oh I've taken replays off as well I'm just I'm a donut I'm an absolute donut today but we can watch that goal back here's Henri Mascara on the ball picks it up he runs at his defenders now he was holding up the ball a little and you can see my fullback rather than making an overlapping run he's made an underlapping run he's chosen that I haven't actually selected how I want the overlap or the underlap I've only got cut inside with the ball but you can't actually manage to wear or where he runs. Of course, there's very little space to overlap. So he's made the underlapping run. He's held up the ball a little bit, but the option isn't on. So he just whipped it in. Vidigal with the header. It's now 2-0. So Swallow getting completely outplayed here. I mean, they're seeing more of the ball, but that doesn't really mean anything. If we're looking at the passer network, they're holding the ball very, very deep. So they're not troubling us. They can have the ball there. They can have the ball there. We're going to pump our fist because it worked well in the first half. Try and get a little bit more. Now, we can use the other uh, variation of this. So we can go now 
to halfback 2-0 we're 2-0 up we can use the halfback version here we go more control now well i said more control they've got a corner burger he heads it out has long on there maxine lopez flamingo <laughs> love that name here comes the left back can we press him bogle do something no no I asked for more control and they've scored literally one minute after half time. Now, this game is going to get interesting. Here's a left back. I would have liked Bogle to engage a little bit more here, but he is on the yellow card. So he pulls off a little bit. I mean, it's a decent goal, to be fair. It is now 2-1. Their first shot on target, of course it is. But we just got our first shot on target as well. The momentum has slightly shifted to Sassuolo. Obviously, they're probably throwing more bodies forward after going 2-0 down trying to get back into the game that was a superb move by stoke so i'm also going to use a shout demand more the momentum has swung a lot has balloomy halloumi whips it in oh, oh what a save by Tarati there and now let's look at making some subs bogle can come off this right back here now his attributes aren't the greatest but he performs really really well he does perform really really well martinelli seems to be precious so we're going to get josh lorian on the striker has a... We're we going to get Balumi off for Luis Diaz. There we go. Go on. Show me why you're the better Luis Diaz. Show me why you're the real Luis Diaz. Show me. So I do think we are... The, we're controlling the momentum better, especially after the halfback change. You can see towards the end of the first half there, it was also Swolo. And we kind of now changed that. And that should wrap up. I mean, it looks like we're safe now. It looks like we are safe now to get this European trophy. Is it the first for Stoke? It's the first European trophy in the Conference League. Stoke are the winners. I'm sorry, Sassuolo. I'm sorry to do this to you. But it was a great game for Sassuolo. Oh, it's magnificent. It's magnificent. There's Ben Wilmot with the trophy as he walks over to the rest of his teammates. They're about to lift the trophy. Champion, champion, ole, ole, ole. Champion, champion, ole, ole, ole. And that wraps up today's video. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Let me have a cup of a cup of sip, a sip of a cup, a sip of a cup. Let me have a sip of my. I can't even end this video. Wow. But that ends today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to check out the Patreon. Sign up if you can. And if you want to support this channel, I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless. Peace out. Boop.